right. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, Sue. Hi, Corey. Camille, Hi, have some familiar faces on the line. Excited to have you. <laughs> Let me uh, get my screen shared and we can just jump right in. All right, everyone seeing my screen okay? Perfect. All right. So today's webinar, we're doing a how to build a Smartsheet dashboard, one subject that is near and dear to my heart and something that I spend quite a bit of time doing. So excited to get into it with all of you today. So my name is Kelly Pratt. I am a consultant with Echo Consulting. We are a project management based services firm. We provide short term part time project management, um, but a big chunk of what we do is software implementations. Um, we do a lot of that in Smartsheet building um, PMOs and just operations and project management uh, solutions within this tool uh, and also support our clients through process improvement as well. Kelly, you stopped sharing. Oh. I stopped sharing. Sorry. I think I hit my space bear, space bar, and it uh, kicked it off. All right. How are we doing? You're good. Go for it. Perfect. All right. Rules of engagement. We are um, recording this session, so feel free to take notes, but just know that you will get a copy of this deck after our presentation, um, and this will get recorded and uploaded to YouTube as well. Um, don't hesitate to unmute yourself and ask questions. You can also ask questions in the chat box. So if you're not familiar with Teams, um, there's a little chat bubble. If you're in the application, it's at the top. If you're in the browser, it's at the bottom. So feel free to pop in any questions and someone on our team will kind of monitor that, monitor that and let me know if any questions are coming up. What to expect today? So again, we're gonna be covering Smartsheet dashboard basics. We're gonna be going through best practices and really the majority of this presentation is just going to include a live demo of me building a dashboard in Smartsheet. So before we kind of jump into Smartsheet, I want to kind of start with the basics of why, why are we building a dashboard? Why do you potentially need to build a dashboard if you're utilizing Smartsheet? So there's a variety of reasons, right? But some of the high level ones, um, it allows you to track KPI performance, again, across many projects, across your operations, systems within Smartsheet. It also allows you to create views that can be specific for the audience. And we're gonna get into kind of different audiences as well. It also can provide you a roll up view. So one of the values of Smartsheet, right? If, for example, if you're using it for a project management solution, it gives the ability to roll up across several projects, several initiatives, several different operation sheets that you may have into one view. Um, and then also gaining insights, you know, um, building it in a way that allows the user that's gonna be looking at it to make the right decisions, to know what questions they need to ask the right team members, who do they need to follow up with and, and potentially provide some accountability as well. So an important component to consider when you're building a dashboard is who is using your dashboard, right? So um, I put together, you know, just very high level buckets of personas and some of the different things that these groups of individuals may want to focus on or the questions that they're going to be hoping to answer with the Smartsheet dashboard, right? So if we think about a senior leader, they really want to see the highest level view. What decisions need to be made or what decisions do we want them to be able to make with the information that we're putting on the dashboard? What are the highest priority issues and risks? Uh, what needs, needs the most attention right now? And also, how is the work that we're doing contributing to the strategic goals potentially as well? A manager level or potentially project manager, what's the performance of our key KPIs? How's the overall project progressing? You know, again, what risks need to be mitigated, mitigated that I need to be aware of? We can also have team member views, right? So we call this current user dashboards. There's functionality within Smartsheet that allows you to filter different reporting into current user views. Um, so if we're thinking about a, a team member that's using a dashboard, they wanna know what do I need to be focused on right now? You know, what, what's due immediately versus what's due next week, two weeks and so on. So just to ground everyone, um, I'm sure we may have a mix on the on the call of um, you know experience levels within Smartsheet. So I just kind of wanted to um, start here before I jump into Smartsheet and start using all the different terminology. I wanted to make sure it was clear kind of what are the different components that make up a Smartsheet dashboard. So I'll kind of cruise through this. And again, if you have any questions as I'm using it, don't hesitate to to pause me and ask. 
Um, but we have really, I tried to order them in the most used uh, widgets is what we call them in a Smartsheet dashboard. So we have a metric widget, which is, allows you to display a specific value or few cell values. Um, we have chart views, right? We have shortcuts, which allow you to just essentially display a list of links. Um, we also have reports. So there's reporting within Smartsheet and you can just display that open on a dashboard. There's also web content. So um, you can show something. It's kind of like an iframe. If you're familiar with that, you can show something external to Smartsheet or potentially a common use case that we see is putting a Smartsheet form within a dashboard. So it's really easy for a user to use. Um, a title widget to just organize widgets and name your dashboard, rich text widget, and then image widget. So those are straightforward in terms of adding text and image. All right, let me uh, transition over to Smartsheet. So for this particular example, I am going to be focused around building a dashboard from a project view. If we have time, we might go into building a, you know, a current user dashboard or a dashboard that rolls up a few different projects, but I'm going to start with just building a dashboard that is specific to one particular project plan. So before I get into actually building the dashboard, just want to share with you kind of the different components that I already did some building. There may be some building that I do as I go to just demonstrate how to build a report or add a formula into a metrics sheet, um, but I did pre-create some of this so that it was easier for me to move, move through it. So you can see here, I have a um, project plan. So Smartsheet implementation plan. This is an example of one of our Smartsheet implementation plans that we use for our clients. Um, so you can see, I kind of fill it out with some test data. Also have a metrics sheet. So this is what we use to sum up information from an individual sheet. So this is gonna allow me to build charts and also use those metrics widgets to display particular data information that I'd like to show on the dashboard. We also have an intake sheet. So again, I just took a copy of this as an example, and this is where we kind of keep a list of all of our projects, health scores, you know, who owns the project, project team, things like that. We also have a project's grade log. So depending on the size of your organization, you may, so let me back up for a second. Um, a grade log is something that we use and we recommend for our clients, which essentially allows you to track changes, risks, actions, issues, and decisions. Um, depending on the size of your organization, we may recommend a grade log per each individual project plan, or we may recommend a grade log that is just one log that rolls up to, um, or that you can link to all of your different projects. So that's the example that I have today, where I kind of have a category, again, just using some placeholder data, but have a category for which client it's um, particularly in reference to. We do have, if anyone's interested more about understanding what a CRAID log is or how we use it, it's a really, really valuable tool. We do have a video in YouTube um, for a CRAID solution in Smartsheet as well. So I think one of my team members might drop the link in the chat if anyone is interested in getting into that. <clears throat> All right, so let's build a dashboard. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click this create button and I'm gonna go down to dashboard. So I'm gonna name my dashboard. Okay, I'm gonna open it. So you can see here, all of the different um, widgets that I referenced in the presentation are here to select when you're deciding which widgets that you want to show. So the first thing I'm going to start with is a title widget. So you do have the title up here. So this is up to you from a preference perspective, but we do often use a title at the top of the dashboard. Um, okay. There are, um, as you can see, really easy editing capabilities in terms of font type, size, coloring. You can make, make the background different colors and the text different colors. The first thing I'm gonna do for this project dashboard is I want to be able to see my project status update. And so it is important for me to call out when we're thinking about structuring a Smartsheet dashboard, right? There's so many different ways that you can format it um, but the one really important thing that we want to consider 
is what do we want to see above the fold versus below the fold, right? So if we think about above the fold information, we really want to see that higher level um, information and data. And then below the um, fold, that's more where we get into showing those open specific reports, where if you really want to get down into the weeds, you can scroll down further and get into that. So for this metric widget, I'm actually going to go into our intake sheet. Because from our intake sheet, we would have a, we do for our organization, have an automation set up where the lead or the owner of a project is responsible for providing a status update um, on our projects, right, on a regular cadence. So if I go into my intake sheet and I look for the project that I'm referencing, so client one, smart sheet implementation. I'm specifically looking for project update. So if I select this specific cell, then that is going to show right here in the metrics widget. So it automatically formats it in this way where it shows the name of the column in the metric widget. So I often delete this and just use the title, um, but there are other use cases and in a second I'll show that. So I'm just gonna delete that. I'm gonna change the view to stack so it just centers. And what this does when I use a metric widget is it's actually, going to update every time the project manager updates this section in the intake sheet, right? So I'm going to include the project update, project status update here at the top. So that's kind of the first thing that you see when their project manager gets to the dashboard, they can see the um, update for that particular project. Perfect. Another thing that can be really helpful if I use the metric widget again is showing the um, project team. So if I go back to my intake sheet, and this is one again where I'm going to want to show the names of the columns because it will be relevant and helpful to be able to see. Okay. So you can see owner backup. We can see specifically who's on this project team. Oops edit this and I can update this to say project team. I tend to use the gray, dark gray a lot just to make it stand out a little bit more. Another way that you can use the metrics widgets see, is from the project plan itself. So someone's using, you know, this view to get insight into how the project's going, just information on the project in general. I'm going to go to the project plan itself. And in that top row, because I'm using hierarchy in the project plan, it's going to show me the start and the finish date of the project. So I'm actually going to select both of those. Right, and then I can see the project timeline. You can change the text size of the information within the metrics widgets as well. Oops, a little too big. If we want that to just stand out a little bit more. going with my gray theme. Perfect. Try to line those up. Sometimes I'll save my dashboard in the middle of, of uh, moving through it just in case I make a mistake and I want to discard changes. You don't want to lose everything that you did. So I just like to kind of save it as I go, especially if I'm building a big dashboard. I'm going to make changes to these sizes too. Awesome. So now I want to get in some metrics. Um, again, if we're looking above the fold, making sure that we're seeing high level metrics. So if I go into, I'm going to use a metric widget again. I'm going to add data. And I built a project metrics sheet. So if we have time, I can get into the metric sheet specifically, but essentially, this is just a blank sheet that I am using. Um, to pull in formulas to look to that specific project plan and pull in specific key data. Um, so for this one, I have my percent complete pulling in here. So I'm going to pull in percentage complete, right? I'm going to stack that, remove the column name because I don't need it. And call it project progress. Make that one a little bit bigger. Right, and that can go 
right here at the top. Another one that I want to add in here is my project health, which actually is coming from the intake sheet rather than my metric sheet. I probably shouldn't search by that because I have a lot of. So if you're not familiar with this, when you I didn't cover this when the pop up comes up, there's a few different ways that you can navigate to the data that you're looking for. So you can navigate into the specific workspace and folder that you know that you have it shared in, or you can do a search totally dependent on your preference. Where's my project health? Here we go. Overall project health status. So then as that gets updated, that's also going to show here on the dashboard. I'm going to delete that column name, make it bigger, title it project health. You can see as you kind of drag and drop, it's automatically going to kind of move things around. So keep that in mind as you're moving it around. Usually pretty easy to use in that regard. Oh, didn't make this one dark gray. Perfect. All right. Now I want to show, um, I'd like to show a high level view of the schedule. I do have kind of the project timeline overall start and finish date here. Um, for our particular projects, we do um, categorize them by project phase. And so I built a report. So I'm going to click on the report, add report. Let's see. And I'm going to do phases. Right. And so just to show you a little behind the curtain on that, we have task types associated with each of our tasks in a project plan. So what that does is it allows us to a when we're categorizing or summing things in our metric sheet, we can look to that value to make sure we can pull, you know, how many open milestones, how many open tasks and things like that. Um, and then this is also going to allow us to utilize this information within our um, filtering capabilities in the reporting as well. Where am I at? Here we go. OK, so you can see here this is essentially just pulling up the the report. And it's going to show a Gantt view, which I do actually want to show for this view. Let me just put it here. Stretch it out so you can see a little bit more and then you can see all these different columns. Um, you can hide the Gantt if you just want to show a report of um, all of these uh, different columns. But for this particular use case, I do want to see. Um, I do want to see the Gantt. You can also remove formatting. So if I just want to see it straight and not see the formatting that I put in the underlying sheet, um, you can remove that formatting as well, which I will do for for this particular example. Um, this example isn't a use case for this, but if you're using a report and you're grouping and I can show an example of this in a little bit, you can automatically collapse those groups. So that may not make sense right now, but again, I'll show uh, an example in a little bit and we can get into that. Kelly, can I ask a couple of quick questions here? Of course. So I noticed that, for example, the primary column has some extra space and the assigned to column has some extra space. How would you go ahead and get rid of that extra space in that primary yes. column? Yep, good call out. So any of the formatting when it comes to the column widths has to be done at the report level. You cannot make that change specifically in the dashboard. So I am going to really quick, I'll, I will get to that in just a second. For every um, widget that you have, there's widget behavior and you can. Create a link for it, which we do often create links for our widgets, probably most of them in this particular example. There's a few examples and I can go through those in a second, but I'm going to open the data source. And I'm going to hit save. So what that Kelly, means, before you click on this, I want to ask one other question too. Sorry yeah, to interrupt. No, go. I also noticed that in your Gantt chart, it's showing a weekly view. So I'm not seeing all of my uh, phases. So when yeah. we go into the individual, um, I wanted to see if we might be able to update that as well. Yeah, absolutely. So um, because I added that widget behavior open data source, when I click on this, it's going to take me to that particular report that I built. So to Molly's point, I can shrink down these column sizes. 
so that I can see more of the information in the view that I have so it doesn't hide behind the Gantt. The other piece that Molly's referencing is in this Gantt view. So in the top right hand corner of the project settings, you can go to timeline display. And right now it's automatically set to weeks and days. And I can change this to months and weeks. If you have higher, um, you know, longer timelines, it goes up as high as years. If you had something, if, if the dates warranted um, that expansion. And Perfect. you could also open to today's date if you wanted to only see. So see that dotted line that's vertical? That's today's date. You could choose in the timeline display to open to today's date if you wanted to. Yep. That's a good call out. Otherwise, it'll start with where the beginning of the project is. Yep. So if I go, where's my dashboard? Oh, yeah, because I clicked through. So if I go back to the dashboard, now you can see that the columns are a little bit smaller and I can see more of them. Let me just do a refresh to make sure that hit. Otherwise, I might need to adjust even more. You can see because the formatting's removed, it's showing more space because in my report, it has some formatting, um, which is showing those with larger, larger text. So if we want to be able to see the finish date, I might need to shrink those up a little bit more, but you guys get the idea. Perfect. That does it. Awesome. And you can see some of that finished date, and it does have a scroll bar so you can scroll over for any information that you can't see. Awesome. So I want to add a few more, probably a few more metrics and maybe a little chart. So let's do metric. I'm going to add data and I'm going to go into my metrics sheet. Project metric sheet. Okay. So you can see here, I have it pretty well labeled in terms of what are the things I am looking to, right? So how many milestones is in this project plan? How many tasks? How many phases? How many, um, tasks in each of our task health. So we also use a formula to calculate task health based on percentage complete and when the due date is. So we can kind of categorize if something's past due, right? It's automatically going to be red. If it's due in the next five days and it's not even 50% complete right now, we're going to mark um, we're going to mark that as yellow. If there's no dates that will show as gray. Um, so this is all the project data. This is the statuses for each of the tasks in the project. I also am calculating past due. Um, and then down here, I'm showing specifically um, that trade log data. So let me just start with, I'm gonna do past due for project plan. I tend to like the stacked view for most use cases. Delete that out, make this one bigger. Right, let's try to fit this up here. I do get a little um, particular about the sizing and making sure that it's fitting and aligning well. You can center this so it looks a little bit better there. Something else I actually use quite often because you can see like it can take a little bit of just finicking to create a metrics widget and then constantly resize it. So a frequent strategy that I take when I'm building a dashboard is once I get the widget to be the size and style that I want, I actually just click this three dots and then I do a copy and then I click exactly the cell where I want it to be and right click and do paste. So then I have it, it looks exactly the same. I don't have to resize it. I do have to change the metric and change the title, but that's to me a lot easier and less work. So for this one, I'm going to do pass to create. I'm going to select this and I'm going to go to this data and layout and change. It's a little bit misleading because it says change, but um, it doesn't actually change it. I'll show you what I mean in just a second. So where's my pass to? OK, my pass to create. Yeah, we don't have anything past to. OK, so it says change, but it didn't actually change it. I have to scroll within this little section and it's down here. So it is a little bit misleading. So I actually have to click this X and then delete this column name like I typically do 
and resize that. Now, the reason is because, as you can see from some of our other metrics widgets, you can show more than one value. It's not just one specific cell. It can be multiple cells. So I think that's why it allows you to do that, but just wanted to share because that's also a little bit misleading. So I am going to add a little chart. So we haven't done a chart yet, and I'm going to look at open task health. So you can build charts from both reports and from metrics widgets. I will show an example of both. Um, I will say that the reporting, the building charts on reports is newer. I don't know exactly when Smartsheet came out of it, um, came out with it, but you have to format it in a specific way. And often it's not formatted in a way that would be helpful to the user. So oftentimes I have to build a report that is specifically linked to a chart and then I have to build another report that I link the chart to so that when the user clicks on it, it's actually helpful for them. So I can show you that in a few minutes here. This one in particular, I'm actually just going to do. Um, where am I? I'm going to do task health and this particular one. I actually could have done this in a report too, but I'm going to pull it from the metrics sheet. And I just want to highlight what Kelly said right there because it was a really important point, which is Kelly is using one set of data to get the data formatted and visualized in a way that makes sense to the user. But Kelly is also thinking about the user experience of when they click it, what information they would want to see. And so that's what she's calling out in terms of she's using one set of data, either a metric sheet or a report to pull the visual, but she is changing the widget behavior so that when the user clicks on it, they're getting the most valuable information for them in that moment. Um, so again, a very important point that you just made, Kelly. Yeah, absolutely. And I can, I can show that one next here just while it's still fresh. So for this, right, I'm going to do tasks by health. It automatically is going to pick the chart type that it thinks is going to work for what your what the data that you selected. Um, and sometimes it's great and other times you want to change it. So. Um, oops, accidentally. Oh, no, I do want to do that. So you can see here. I want to switch rows and columns so that it shows or no, maybe I don't want to do that actually because I want the colors to show. So I'm in the data and chart type and right here there's a chart type. And it's doing column for this particular one. I like to use pi, but then I like to use a semicircle. So in the data and chart type section, I'm choosing the chart type pi. And then in the pie chart and series, you can display as a semicircle. Okay, and then I can choose to show either the percentage of the items, I can hide the values altogether, or I can show the amount, which for this use case is what I would prefer. I can change the colors. It's not automatically picking up what colors these should be associated with, as you can see. So I'm going to change the red to a red. I'm going to change the yellow to a yellow and the green to a green. And then the legend, you can also display or um, select the position and I'm going to do it at the bottom or I could even potentially hide show no legend because it's kind of straightforward, right? I'm using the colors to display what it is, but those are two different options that you can take. And Kelly, why do we typically like to leave the legend on these red, yellow, green widgets? Because sometimes if if you when you first set up the chart, it doesn't have any like, for example, we also use gray in our task health, but this isn't showing up with any grays. So I might look at this in three days from now and we have some grays because we added tasks and the gray is going to show as blue. Which is confusing, so then it, it's not really Smartsheet hasn't picked up a way to automate that at this point. So it is important to keep that legend to your point so that you can catch that issue and fix it. Awesome. And for this one, I would want to actually for all of these, right? Or most of these, probably not the project health and the project progress, but I would typically um, link these to a report for the user to be able to click on the metric and then see the information, right? Okay, so there's one past due task on the project. What is that specific project or what is that specific task? So I'm gonna click edit on this one and I'm gonna go to that widget behavior. 
And for this one, I'm not going to open the data source because the data source is my metric sheet, which is not where I want to go. Um, you can go to another site, which um, I, I haven't really run into a use case for that, to be honest, but obviously I'm sure there are some. And then open a smart sheet item, which was my most commonly used one. There we go. So hopefully I already built a past due tasks report. So I'm going to link that and hit save just to show you. And then you can click on that and it's going to take me to the past due tasks. Now you can see I built the metric sheet as an example, so I must have built something in my formula incorrectly and I can actually go correct it because I see someone's interested in formulas and I can do a quick demo of that. Um, but you can see the actual past due tasks that are there. So if I go into my metrics sheet, let's see. So there's really not a specific um, rhyme or reason necessarily for how to format a metric sheet. The only ones are just based on if you want to use it for a chart, right? So if you have like all these values, the label and then the value next to it, you can build a chart with this. You can also build a chart with this, with two values. I will caveat that that's the most you can go. Um, I know like it, people compare it to Excel sometimes and Excel can be a little bit more advanced in that regard, but you can at least do those um, two comparisons and do a stacked bar chart. So I can show you guys that in a second as well. So if I'm in this past due task, I'll just start from scratch. Okay, so most formulas in a metrics sheet are gonna be count ifs the majority of the time. So I'm going to do equals count ifs. And I only want to look at, so first I need to select the project plan that we have. I only want to look at tasks that are not already completed or potentially canceled. So the reference that I want to look at first is I want to look at the status column. Now you can see I already named this reference, Smartsheet Implementation Plan Status. Um, it typically autom automatically will show like range one or range two, and it's really helpful to rename them to what makes sense for you so that when you're looking back at your formula, you understand what you were looking at. So for this one, I'm looking at the status column, and I only want to count ones that are not, so I use these two carats to mean it does not equal completed. I also don't want it to look at any that are canceled, so I need to do the status column again. And then does not equal canceled. Now another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add dollar signs before the column name and the row. Just in case to make sure we're always looking at that specific static value in case things get moved around in the sheet. So those dollar signs, if you're familiar with Excel, it's the same type of thing. It just makes sure that I'm always looking at that specific cell. OK, so that's the first thing. Now I want to look at reference another sheet. I want to look at the due date and I want to know anything that is. Less than today or, or from beyond before today. So you can see I didn't rename this one. This is our finish column and I'm going to name it finish. I'm just going to take out this beginning too, because I don't know if those brackets are going to cause issues. Any special characters in your reference name, if like if your reference name has parentheses in it, for example, that's going to mess up your formula. So you kind of want to keep the name clean. I'm going to insert reference. And then I'm going to do is less than today, which is a function within Smartsheet that you can just use. I put two parentheses next to today, which means it's looking at today. I could do today with a five, which would be five days from now, or I could do today minus two, which would be two days previous. Oh, maybe I have it the wrong way. Hmm, Molly, do you know what I'm doing wrong now? Sorry, I was having too much fun in chat. Um, it is, let's see here, you've got smart sheet column today, do, 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 do. Uh, be less than today maybe in but you have the status but you're using the numbers in column four instead of using complete status and canceled status so it shouldn't be column four it should be the actual name right oh yeah yep <laughs> yeah good call 
Good call. So I'm just going to change Another important call out, have someone else to be able to QA your work. <laughs> yes. Woohoo. Thank you. <laughs> Good call. So what I was doing there, which I did incorrectly because I was looking at the numbers, is I'm referencing that specific name. So again, it's saying if I'm looking at this reference, I'm not looking at any that say complete or canceled. Perfect. So that's updated. Thanks, Molly. My QA buddy. Okay. Back to this. Um, actually, I don't have a report for tasks by health. So why don't we walk through creating a report as well? Because I don't believe I have that. Maybe I do. I have red and yellow tasks. Oh, no, I do have open tasks by health. So I did good. Okay. Let me open it and I'll just kind of show you guys a little bit about it. Um, uh, the source sheet, right? I'm looking at the project plan. I specifically selected which columns I want to show in this particular report. So you don't have to show all of the columns. Sometimes we'll have extra columns for notes or potentially baseline dates, or we record dates often. If uh, we'll record it once it was completed, we'll record it once it was canceled, once it was put on hold. So we have that data again, so we can reference that in formulas. And then I have this filtered down to um, is not one of completed or canceled. So again, this is only going to look at open tasks. And then I also am filtering out our project row, which is just the top row of our project plan. And then the last thing that I have here is I've grouped it by task health. So then it's really easy to see, you know, which tasks fall into each of those categories. So I'm going to go back to my dashboard and I'm going to click edit. And I'm going to do that widget behavior, open a smart sheet item. I'm going to look for my open tasks by health and link that there. So again, same kind of functionality, right? If I click on it, it's going to go to that, go to that report. So now I want to show um, how to build a chart from a report. So maybe I should go into the reports first. So you can see again from this report, we have a report that has several different columns and then is grouped. And this is a good example because I already did this. Yay. All right. So I have two open tasks by assigned to. So when I use the, the terminology by assigned to, I mean I'm grouping it in that way. So when you look at the open tasks by assigned to, and look at the primary report first. You can see it has all the columns that I think are relevant, and then it's grouping it based on who is in the assigned to value. Important call out, if you are allowing multiple contacts in your assigned to column, it will not let you group by that value. Strongly recommend that for all assigned to columns, you use one contact. If you need another um, column, I have clients that use like supporting SMEs or just supportive or whatever, like another column that you potentially want others to be notified or just associated with the task, you can certainly do that. But um, it really limits yourself if you allow that assigned to a uh, column to show multiple contacts. So always keep that to one. Um, it's also that's also going to be an issue just as a tangent for multi selects um, as well. It does still allow you to group, but it's just it's not um, very intuitive because it's going to show the all the groupings together. OK, so this is an open task by assigned to. This is the report that I would want somebody to get to and be able to navigate to and to be able to use with ease, right? What is the task I have? It's assigned to me. Um, you know, what's my percentage complete, the status, start and finish, and so on. This is the report that I built to generate the chart. So typically, in my experience, it has to only be two columns, and then you want to group it by what you want the data to show in the chart and group by, right? And then you also have to summarize it. So up here, if you can see, there's grouping, and I grouped it by assigned to, and it automatically goes in ascending. And you can do double groupings, but again, not for a chart. You don't want to do that. And then I summarized and I did a count because that's what I'm trying to get to, right? How many tasks are assigned to each individual person? So I'm going to go to my chart and I'm going to add data. And I'm going to look for my open task by assigned to chart. And I'm going to show this. 
for some reason it shows a funky legend, but I don't really need it. So in this use case, I usually hide the legend and then it shows grouped how I want it to show. For this option, um, it does not allow me to change the colors of the different series. So just be mindful of that. There are some kind of formatting when you use charts. Typically in a metrics widget, you have to have the categories in columns versus if you have them all in one column, it's not gonna let you change the different colors. Um, but in the series, you can also always show value label. So then it's gonna show the value, right? And then I'm gonna click link this to a Smartsheet item, but I'm gonna link it to my other report that has more information so that when the user gets to it, it's really clear what they need to do. Perfect. So another chart I'm going to add, and I'm adding this for a specific use case because I know we're, we have 20 minutes and I want to leave some time for questions at the end. Um, so I'm going to try to go just another couple minutes. I do want to show another tip. So let's just say I want to see a graph that shows my um, create items in uh, grouped by priority. So you can see here, I have the column, I just highlight all of this data, I click OK, and then that's going to show a chart for me. As I mentioned, because I have all of those in one column, it's not going to let me change the colors of the um, of the different columns. So that's fine. I'm going to hide that legend again. And then I'm going to link to, oh, actually, I actually don't know if I have this report. Let me go create it. So let's save. And this is all leading to a tip that I want to share. Okay, so I have some create reports. I have a couple tips in what I'm about to show you. Tip one, once you format a report the way that you really want it to be formatted, so for, for um, for example, I'm, I'm going to build several CRADE reports. I'm going to build open CRADE by type, open CRADE by assign to, past due CRADE, critical and high risks and issues from the CRADE. But oftentimes in all those reports, I may group them differently and I'm certainly going to have different filters, but I may want the same columns to show in every report. And in my opinion, that's what takes the longest when you build a report is checking off all the columns, sizing them, ordering them how you want. So my number one tip for that is once you create a report, just save as new. So I have an open CRADE report. I'm gonna right click on this and I'm gonna click save as new. And then it's gonna be that exact report as a replica and I can change the filters and the groupings, but the columns are gonna be the same. And so I don't have to do that and it saves me a lot of time. So I'm gonna do open CRADE by priority. I'm gonna click save. I'm pretty sure for that open CRADE, I actually have it by type. Let's see, open. Where did it go? Did I save it in the wrong place? Oh, no, there it is right in front of me. All okay. right, open CRADE by priority. Okay, so you can see the filters are already what I want it to be. So I'm looking at a specific client and then I'm looking at only items that are not marked as closed. But in this example, I have it grouped by type of CRADE. So if it's an action, a decision issue or a risk, but I want to group it by priority. Now, here's the tip. If you don't add numbers to the beginning of your priorities, then they're probably not gonna show in the order that you want, or they aren't gonna show in the order that you want because um, it orders alphabetically. So we used to just have like critical, high, medium, low, right? And then it would show in critical, low, medium. Now I'm testing myself on the alphabet high, right? And so that's not really in the right order that you want to see. You want to see the critical at the top. So what we do is we add those numbers to the beginning of each of our priorities. And that can be used for any use case. We often or always use it for priority, but there may be others that you have. Um, and that can be really helpful to make sure that it's sorting in the right order for you. So I'll go back to my dashboard, click edit, widget behavior. And then I'm going to do open CRADE by priority. Another tip, if I build a report while I'm in the dashboard, 
I usually have to exit out of the report and then refresh the dashboard before it will show in that list. So sometimes that happens if I'm kind of building it on the fly. I'm just going to do a couple more things and then I will open for questions. So I'm going to resize this down. You guys saw me link plenty of charts, so I'm going to skip linking this chart for right now. I'm just going to resize these. And something I haven't added yet, which is very, very common for us to add, is a shortcut widget. So I'm going to add that shortcut widget. Shortcut widget is very, very easy to use. I'm going to resize it. Oh, little not small enough. Resize it, set it up next to this guy. Oh, and Molly, I did see you make a comment about a stack chart. I can actually show an example of that in a second too. Um, but essentially it's gonna allow you to link websites, attachments even, or smart sheet items, which is the most common. Oh, sorry, I have a lot of stuff in my smart sheet, so sometimes it is slow. Cool, so in this client, I can literally just check off all of these reports that I want. So there are some reports that I'm not necessarily going to put and open up on the dashboard, and so we just want to be able to have a really easy way to link to them. Kelly, we just got a great question, which was, how can you tell if you've linked a report in the widget or chart? So just refresh on you, that. Yeah, if you click on any of the charts or the reports or the metrics widgets, really any of those three, over on the right hand side, there's going to be this option that is called widget behavior. And you can see, because I just said I was going to skip on this one, it says take no action. And that means it's not linked. So and I could open that is out of the box for Smartsheet. So, like when you do a widget, it's going to take no action, which means if you click on it, nothing happens when you're in the dashboard if you're published. Um, unless you change it to say, click on something else. Yep. So usually at this point in the dashboard, right? Just as an example, we have our high level data up top. We have a few charts, we have some links. Usually at this point below the fold, that's where we're putting open reports. So we're probably gonna put an open past due report, a, a report of all tasks that are yellow and red, a report of critical and high risks and issues. So I can add a couple of those, but I also did want to add one of those charts that shows stacked as well. I actually might even um, replace this one. So if I click, you can see I clicked, sorry, I went a little fast there. Click on the three dots and click edit. I can click edit here and it's going to take me back to the metrics sheet. If I was on a different sheet, I could just navigate to the metric sheet. I have the um, create priority data also formatted with the create types. So you could that way I can see actions by priority, issues by priority. So I can just highlight all of that and click OK. It's automatically showing a clustered column. Um, but for this example, I want to use a stacked column. And I believe you can change switch rows and columns, and then it will show me, like if I want it to show by priority and then show you know action decision stacked but usually i do it the opposite way where i would have actions decisions and then stacked column it doesn't look like because i had hidden the legend so i'm going to put that one on the bottom so now i can see what the colors correspond with and then um in the series i would go change the colors to be something easier on the eyes for example and best practices for usability, right, is whichever has the least number of colors. As much as we all like rainbows, the, the, the way that it shows the least number of colors is typically the most user friendly chart to show. So mm -hmm. if one has four one way or five another way, typically you go with the way that shows with four. So. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So I'll just add 11 a minute warning. Yeah, I'll just add a couple of reports here, but we can open for questions while I do that if anyone has any. Don't all rush at once. I have maybe a really quick question. Perfect. Great. Okay, I wasn't sure if you could hear me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
about when would be a good time to use the um, when you're selecting the source, when would be a good time to use the sheet summary data versus the grid data? Yep, that's a good question. So you mean from a, a metrics widget perspective? Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it really depends on how on how you are using it. If you are have, if you do have a sheet and you use that sheet summary data, that's a great way to sum that information. We tend to utilize metrics sheets simply for the fact that it's very flexible um, and that we can build these charts and these different stack charts from that. So we tend to just sum those items in the metric sheet because we already have one created. And so it's a little bit less complexity of like, well, I have some metrics in my project summary and I have some metrics in my metric sheet. So um, to me, that's just a preference piece. If you're not using a metric sheet, so for some clients that are not um, as comfortable with formulas, for example, we I may set up some, um, you know, more simplistic formulas in the project summary and then just train them how to build charts from reports. So again, it's just it's not as flexible. And so that's why we personally use metric sheets, um, but you can certainly use uh, project summary and it will function, you know, just the same. OK, cool. That's helpful. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Basel, I'm not sure what you mean by waterfall chart. If you want to unmute. Yeah, waterfall chart, uh, you know, uh, we typically use to show changes uh, each year. What was the last what was the change in last year and what, what's the current change? Uh, we typically use, uh, you know, I was just wondering if we can still implement here. We have the chart in Excel. Yeah, so Smartsheet has um, it's a basic dashboarding tool. Um, so it doesn't, for example, have multi level filtering. You have to filter the data yourself. Um, it only has kind of one filter. Um, if you're looking for more like multi level filtering, widget level filtering, um, and more chart options, typically we add on either Tableau or Power BI or a specific data visualization software and use the underlying data in Smartsheet and any other data source. So um, I don't. I, I'm honestly not familiar with a waterfall chart, I don't think, um, but it's not one of the options in the chart widget. That's all out of the box. OK. But I think your team uses Tableau and you guys have Power BI actually. So um, for more complex uh, charts, I would say that that's the point where you potentially want to upgrade um, and use a different data visualization tool. Hey, <clears throat> Kelly, this is Will. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hey, I, um, this is kind of a silly question, but I often when I'm creating widgets, I don't know. I, I often struggle with sh do I even need a title? Because like if it's a metrics widget, you know, the data thing is there. So I don't yeah. know if there's like best practice around have a title, don't have a title to widgets. Yeah, I honestly. Um... I think it's just a preference. There are some use cases where I have used it where I don't need it because to the your point right on these, I'm using um, the column name like you saw in some of the widgets. I deleted the column name and then right. in other widgets I don't because that's relevant. So in th these cases like project team and project timeline, I might not have to use those. It might be straightforward, um, but I think it just makes the dashboard look a little bit cleaner um and professional but it i have had use cases where i don't have the title if the information in it is straightforward and i it doesn't require an explanation yeah i think you've highlighted the key things there because it's kind of a trade-off between do i want to spend the time to format the actual title <laughs> versus i want it to be separating from the other widgets and clean so yeah yeah that makes sense. absolutely but similarly we've had some organizations that have actually used four or five six titles within the same dashboard Right. So like we've actually had organizations that have like summary section and then task right. level information and then create level information and they use the dashboard in a more vertical way um, instead of a more navigational way, which is like navigating between dashboards. So like in a portfolio example, oftentimes we will link. We will either add the link to all the program dashboards or project dashboards within that, or we'll even take a 
um, embed code of the dashboard that we want them to jump to and actually use it as an image so they can click on the dashboard and then move over to that. So there's a lot of different options there. So it's really a lot of personal yeah. preference and uh, culture and users and things like that. Cool, thanks. Awesome. Natasha, I see your question. What about a dashboard that draws in a versus? Yep, absolutely. So we do we do both um, typically. I mean, depending on what the engagement is with each individual client. But for example, we build a lot of uh, PMO structures within Smartsheet. So with with those, we build a template set essentially where we have a project plan and reports and a metric sheet and a dashboard already pre-linked and working together. And then you can save as new for that folder and it will replicate each time you create a new project. If you're a larger organization that happens through Control Center. Um, and then we also build portfolio, you know, program level views and portfolio level views to show different information based on the person that's looking at it. Kelly, can you show them really just quickly um, what you when you say template set and solutions, oftentimes we so when we work with a client, right, we have kind of our own template set that we've built that we oftentimes work from. But if you are a Smartsheet user and you don't want to start from scratch, like Kelly showed you how to create a dashboard, oftentimes what we'll recommend is to actually go to the solution center and look at some of the dashboards that they have available to you out of the box. Um, and that'll give you one, some ideas for different dashboards and the way you might want to set it up, but also it'll help you not have to start from scratch. And what's important about the solution center is there's a template and then there's a template set. So a template set is going to be more similar to what Kelly started from, which is it's going to have sheets for different data sources. It's going to have some reports and usually it'll have a dashboard or some other way to kind of report that out. So when we start with a client like, or if we start with a team and they're not planning on using services, but they kind of want to not start from scratch because they're learning as they go, we typically recommend they start from a template set like the project management office template set. Yep, so there's a plus sign over here on the left-hand side of the navigation, and you can select different kind of um, categories that they have preset, so I'm on projects. And to Molly's point, you can click on the template set for project management office, and you can learn more, and it's gonna actually show you all of the different components of the template, what is made up of it, and then when you use it, it essentially saves in your sheets folder, and to Molly's point, again, you can use that as a starting point, even if you just want to use the dashboard from it. So it kind of gives you this like solution um, architecture, what's included, how to use it, and all that information. I wonder if there's an example of the dashboard in here. So if you don't have Smartsheet experience, some. if you don't have Smartsheet experience in-house, and you don't have the option to use a partner or someone to kind of help you build out your solution, start with their solution center. They're not perfect or tailored to your organization, but they'll be a good place to start from that you can tailor and make changes to versus starting from scratch. Yeah, there's one that's not just even that one was a project management office and this one is just a single project that has, you know, a sheet and reports and, and a dashboard kind of what we, um, a bit of what we covered here today. It's a good resource. Awesome, two minutes. Any other questions? I'll put a quick plug in, Kelly, I'm sorry. But um, if you guys are looking for more Smartsheet tips, we do have a Smartsheet YouTube channel. We're looking for subscribers because it helps us get our message out there. We do like to offer these free webinars at least monthly with a variety of topics. So I know that Rachel gave us an idea for a topic because formulas and Kelly is our formula guru. Um, but definitely if you have other topics that you'd like us to cover in kind of this communal format, let us know. Otherwise, we do offer Smartsheet implementation consulting and, and partnership and things like that and actually set up solutions for organizations that are growing and do training as part of that. One of our big things at Smartsheet is building self-sufficiency, not dependency. So our goal is to really make you a champion, have you drink the Kool-Aid and be able to create some of your own solutions and or build on top of solutions that maybe we help you with initially. So um, highly recommend checking out our YouTube channel. Kelly has a video specifically on formula basics. Hint, 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 Rachel. Um, and I'll actually grab that and send that over. But um, in the meantime, we will send a link out to this on YouTube. Um, so that you can rewatch it as many times as you want to fully understand how to make the awesomest dashboard. Thank you, Kelly. Yeah, thanks everybody. Have a great rest of your day and week. Thanks, y'all. Bye. Bye.
was great.